Hey everyone, I've got another fun project. This has been on the back burner for quite a while, waiting for me to get a bit of free time. About a year ago, this lamp got broken. It was heading for the bin, but I really wanted to try and save this nice lampshade. I've ended up with something that I think looks pretty good. It's a flame effect lamp. In this video, I'll run through the build and try and highlight all the bits I got wrong. Hopefully it should be interesting and entertaining. Let's get going. So I've purchased a 5 meter run of WS2812B LEDs and 5 meters of aluminium channel. If I cut both of these into 25 centimeter lengths, that should give me 20 LED strips to build the core of my lamp from. So the first step is to cut the LEDs into strips and wire them up. So the LED strip can be easily cut with scissors However, I do have to cut through some solder joints and I think this might put some stress on the PCB pads and this does seem to cause some issues later where one of the pads comes loose. With the LED strips cut, I need to get them wired up. So I've cut 20 lengths of red, green and white wires and tinned all the ends. To connect them to the LED strips, we tin the connectors on the LED PCB and then just reflow the ends of the wire onto them. I'm going to wire up all the data lines of the LED strips so they are connected together and I'm going to add power and ground lines to the bottom of each strip. This should avoid any voltage drop over the LED PCBs. I'm also adding heat shrink to prevent any shorting out. Quite a lot of soldering later we have all the LED strips connected to each other on the data lines and we have wires to connect power to the bottom of each strip. In hindsight, it would probably have been better to join the power lines between the strips and only add power at a few places. All these wires are going to prove to be quite a pain to join up. The next step is to cut the aluminium channels to length. This is a pretty simple job and I make use of my 3D printed mitre block to make this a bit easier. We've now got 20 LED strips and 20 aluminium channels. There's a trick to getting the LED strips into the channel. You need to push it in at an angle and get it under the lip and then you can flatten it. Just trying to stick it straight in is pretty painful. The glue is very strong on these LED strips so it's almost impossible to pull them out of the channel and redo them. It's looking pretty good already, it looks quite professional. I now need something to make it into a cylinder to fit inside the lampshade. Let's jump into Fusion 360 and do a bit of design and 3D printing. As usual, we'll start off with a sketch. I know that I want to end up with a circle and I've made a guess at a suitable diameter that should accommodate the aluminium channels with a minimum gap between them and should fit inside the lampshade. We'll add the rectangle for the aluminium channel. I'll do a quick guideline so that we can fix its position. I've measured the size required and added on a bit of tolerance for the 3D printing so they will slide in easily. I'll now just offset the original circle to give us a ring. I want to be able to slide the channels in and have them supported so we'll add a lip in the channel hole. I also don't want to block any LEDs and I want to route the wires through to the back so I'll add some sketch lines for these cutouts. This will make a bit more sense as we extrude the sketch into 3D. The first thing we'll do is extrude to the full height we require. We'll now cut out the lead channel. We first cut out the smaller channel and then we make it wider to let the channel slide in and be supported by the ledge.
I'm going to add a chamfer to the ledge as I'm going to be printing this upside down and it will make it easier to print the overhang. That's the basic cutout done. We now need to make sure the wires can be threaded to the rear. So we create another sketch and project the required paths from our original sketch. We can then just extrude up to cut out the hole. We now repeat these features 20 times to get our finished object. The end result looks pretty good. We should be able to easily slide each channel into the slots and then pass the wires underneath and through to the back. I'm printing two of these, one for the top and one for the bottom. Assembly is quite simple, sliding the channels into the bottom piece is pretty easy. However, fitting the top piece was a lot more difficult and involved quite a lot of swearing, so I've skipped that video. I should have included some affordances in the 3D printed part to help guide the channels in. With the top piece connected, we just add some hot glue to keep everything in place. You can see how nicely the wires root through to the inside of the cylinder. You can also see here a fix that I needed to apply for one of the pads lifting off the PCB. I ended up having to cut a lead out of the strip and connect slightly further down. Repeating the gluing on the other end of the cylinder gives us our final core for our lamp. We now just need to join all these power and ground wires together and root them out. Here's the final wiring harness that I've ended up with. Whilst doing this I found one mistake where I'd swapped 5 volts in ground over and I also managed to miss one wire when joining them all together. A couple of easy mistakes to make when you have so many wires to join up. Next time I'll definitely connect all the strips together and only have a few power and ground wires coming in. To drive the system I'm going to use the same circuit that I used for my self-organising Christmas lights. The WS2812 LEDs require 5 volt logic so we need to convert from the 3 volt 3 logic of the ESP32 to 5 volts. I'm using a spare MOSFET driver chip that I have from another project, but any level shifter should do the job. To power the whole thing, I have a beefy 10 amp 5 volt power supply. This is slightly under spec for driving all the LEDs at full power white, which would require around 15 amps. But for our fire simulation, we won't be driving the LEDs at full power. To create the actual fire, I'm using an old school computer game effect. There's a lot of articles on the web on how to do this, I've included some of the links in the description. With it all wired up and connected, we get a pretty good effect. If you squint a bit and use your imagination, it does look like fire. I've added a very simple web UI based on the one I used for my moon lamp, so I can easily modify the colours. It looks nice, there are some issues with the final result. Cutting the LED strip at the solder joint does seem to have weakened the PCB pads. Next time I'll offset my cuts so that I don't have to cut any solder joints. Driving at full power white is not recommended. If you do this after a while, the aluminium does start to get quite warm and the hot glue starts to soften. Perhaps hot glue is not the best choice for this kind of thing. The LEDs are not very good at low light levels. They are either off or on quite brightly. This makes it quite difficult to get a good flame effect. The fast LEDs library that I'm using does have a dithering effect that can be used, but that is only really suitable for a small number of LEDs. With almost 300, it cannot update fast enough to avoid flicker. Perhaps dividing the strip into smaller sections is the solution to this. There's way too many wires being joined together. This is not very tidy and it's prone to failure. I should have connected up the power connections along with the data connection and only injected power in a few places. To diffuse the light, I'm using some opaque acetate sheet. This is not as effective as I'd like, as it's a bit too close to the light sources, so you can still see the individual LEDs. Any suggestions for a better material for this would be great. I also spent way too long messing around with the fire effect, thinking I could improve on the old school effect. In the end, I've ended up with something that is pretty much the same, so that was a bit of a waste of time. Apart from these minor issues, 
it's a pretty pleasing project. Hope you've enjoyed it, and if you have, then please hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.